if someone is actively lying to you, manipulating you, showing a direct disregard for your emotional well-being. Basically, the point that we're trying to get at here is that like if someone has been shitty to you, like truly shitty to you and making your life miserable, like you do not owe them anything. Yeah. <laughs> I think other than getting yourself out, getting yourself safe, getting yourself away, and you don't need to feel bad about not communicating with this person anymore. Welcome to the Multi Amory Podcast. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. We believe in looking to the future of relationships, not maintaining the status quo of the past. So whether you're monogamous, polyamorous, swinging, casually dating, or if you just do relationships differently, we see you and we're here for you. On this episode of the Multi Amory Podcast, we're talking about a spooky and scary topic ghosting. That's right. Maybe you've done it. Maybe it's happened to you. Maybe you've just heard about it on the internet. But ghosting has become a pretty popular option for ending a relationship these days. We're going to talk in this episode about why people ghost, what are the pros and the cons of ghosting as well as what to do if you've been ghosted, and what to do if you might feel the urge to get your ghost on yourself. (laughs) To get your ghost on. I love it. Yeah, Yeah, I love that phrase. I wish it it kind of goes against the spirit of this episode. Spirit. (laughs) Oh, that's Oh, boy. 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 Yeah, do you think that... I, I feel that I have picked up from speaking with clients, especially who are currently in the dating scene in the midst of this pandemic that we're dealing with, as of the time of this recording, that I do feel like ghosting is still alive and well in the dating scene, Mm. especially now as more and more people are essentially forced to move to dating online. Well, yeah, and it's probably even easier to do right now because that is often the only method of communication that people are like going through is virtually, not necessarily like in person. So, yeah, Yeah. it's probably quite popular. Well, have any of you ghosted slash been ghosted oh gosh let me count the ways let me oh. count the ways <laughs> oh yeah both on the receiving end giving end for sure what especially when i think back to my early days of online dating i mean i don't know when i was young younger than i am now i feel like i was already really set up to be very confrontation avoidant in most cases and in most relationships, mm-hmm. especially and especially a dating relationship and very avoidant of honest communication in general. So to me, for a long time, it really just didn't feel like a viable option to just honestly say to someone, actually, I don't think we're that compatible or I'm not that interested or I'm genuinely too busy to start a relationship right now that you had to just find some way to slip out unnoticed interesting right yeah to just yeah slip out while they're at the store buying cigarettes um oh there you go gosh or, or has it been done to you yeah so i mean i think ghosting has sort of evolved over time because mm. i think the thing of just kind of gradually becoming less available and less responsive is has been around a lot longer than what we refer to now as ghosting, which usually would then lead to someone being like, hey, so I guess you're not interested in me anymore, eventually getting to some sort of a like, or having them break up with you because you're not available enough or, you know, something. It was like a way to cause a breakup. And then I think yeah. in, in modern time, it just became like a full ghost rather than this sort of... <laughs> Ghost with the goal a of a po. breakup. It's just the, yeah. uh, the full on ghost. And now like that is the breakup itself. So that's kind of evolved. And I've definitely done that first one and had that first one done to me. As far as like the, the modern, just like complete ghosting, not as much. Um, but, but yeah, a couple of times where, where someone's just kind of disappeared. There was a, I was, <laughs> Uh, gosh, um, I've definitely, I think the last time I recall being ghosted was the last time that I was on Japanese Tinder a few oh. years back, huh. um, where, yeah, I was, you know, I thought I had developed some rapport with this guy and he, 
uh, shared with me a link to his like new YouTube channel and stuff like that. And oh, the, I remember this. And the weird thing is that like even after he ghosted me, I still like subscribed to his YouTube channel for a long time. <laughs> now not not in like a weird desperate kind of way. I promise. I promise not in a weird desperate kind of way. But just kind of like, kept forgetting that I was like, oh right, this YouTube channel is still a thing. And then I didn't unsubscribe until finally I, I became more savvy in the ways of Japanese YouTube and realized that his channel wasn't that good. It was just kind of spoofing other popular channels. Mm. So anyway, that's mm. my story. You're welcome. Yeah. So I just want to say my very sad ghost story. I don't... It, maybe I've ghosted people. Not that I really recall. Perhaps like p- petering off for sure, as Jace was talking about. But mm. I... I I was very excited about this woman on OkCupid, okay and it was like early in my non-monogamy journey. I think you two were definitely had remember the story, maybe, but I remember yeah, this, yeah, yes. And we were like hitting it off. She was into Led Zeppelin, like super <laughs> adorable, and just seemed fun and very queer and very like excited, maybe to talk more. And then I asked, I was like, well, let's meet up and maybe go for coffee or like, can I take you to lunch or something? And then radio silence. I'm Mm. like, what? Yeah. (laughs) It was really sad. I was so sad. I know. I remember for a while after that, you were still like, but, uh, but should I message her again? Like what? Yeah. And you're like, just, just, yeah. 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 I I will say as far as the being ghosted thing goes, um, or maybe even ghosting other people that in, in those like early phases of talking to someone online, I'd say that happens a ton. Yeah. To, to me, I like think definitely it that it's like you're a couple conversations in and then they just disappear. And it's always like, did I do something? Like what, what happened? I don't, I don't know what it is. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll get into that a little yeah. bit as the episode goes on. Yeah. My partner, Alex has been telling me his trials and tribulations of online dating during the time of covid and at least according to him his anecdotal experience has been that conversations are much shorter these days that Mm. there's a lot more people just kind of really dropping off the face of the planet much Mm. faster and so he thinks that it's just because people are bored and lonely and are just trying to cycle through and get some kind of some kind of contact and uh that maybe because there's just a higher volume of people just trying to to grind on through all that that maybe that means there's just more people being impatient and i i don't know i don't know i've yeah. not tested his theories i think in general with online dating people often go through this kind of i'm b- bored and or lonely and or something else right now so i'm going to get on online dating and then they get busy again or they hang out with their friends more and just kind of like forget about it for a while interesting which can sometimes cause something that seems like ghosting. And then maybe two months later or three months later, you'll get a message from someone being like, hey, sorry, I disappeared. I got busy or whatever. I think it's really just because it's like, oh, I'm not really thinking about online dating now. And I bet right now during lockdown, that's something that for a lot of people is going on. Oh, it's yeah, just, probably like as people's busy job and situations and and... change and parenting situations change and school yep. situations change. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So Okay, so I think... We all probably have a rough understanding of what ghosting refers to, but just in case, here's the official urban dictionary <laughs> definition. Official, unofficial, so, urban, official. Yeah, urban dictionary. Uh, when a person cuts off all communication with their friends or the person they're dating with zero warning or notice beforehand, you'll mostly see them avoiding friends, phone calls, social media, and avoiding them in public. There's an additional term floating, a couple other terms floating around out there. There's breadcrumbing, which is defined as the act of sending out flirtatious yet non-committal text messages, i.e. breadcrumbs, in order to lure a partner or a sexual partner without having to expend too much effort. Or when you have no real intention of taking things further, but you still want the intention or you still want to keep the option open. And that sounds like maybe a little bit of what you were talking about, Jace, with the petering out to a certain extent, potentially. Hmm. Maybe. I feel like the petering out is more just wanting to break up, but being being too cowardly to do it. And so just kind of slowly backing away. kind of like the carrot, the dangling carrot. Right. right. It's a little, little yeah. bit different intention, I think. Of like kind of maybe in a not very honest or direct kind of way, trying to keep your options open. Maybe, yeah. Of who might be out there trying to stimulate the interest just enough to keep them um, going. Uh, there's also the term submarining, 
that I've heard, which is when someone ghosts you, they disappear, and then you hear absolute radio silence for like several months or even longer sometimes. And then out of nowhere, there they are messaging you in the middle of the night asking if you're up and how are you doing and things like that. Has that ever happened to the two of you? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, well, have I done that? Maybe, yeah, yeah, I've probably done that before. Again, like back in my youth, I feel like <laughs> since since Jace, like I've been in like two like really long term relationships, and that's right. been like the last ten years of my life. So, with a bunch of you know lovely non monogamous relationships here and there as well. So, but less of the like intentional online dating, I guess. Yeah, I haven't really mm. online dated as much as probably the two of you have. So you're the experts here. Well done. Oh boy, great. Cool. Yeah, cool, Good. cool. <laughs> uh, so we want to get into some statistics and studies regarding ghosting. There, there have been actually a lot of like kind of conflicting studies and statistics out there. I found some that said like, okay, seventeen percent of all people have ghosted or been ghosted, which seemed really low. And then others said like 50%, which still seemed fairly low, honestly. I feel like most people I know have done this, at least at least within our age group they have. Um, so I found this like kind of fun infographic. Uh, it's, it's a website with multiple infographics talking about online dating and specifically ghosting. And they surveyed millennials aged 18 to 35. So sorry, Jace, you're out of out of there. Bye. <laughs> I don't count no. in this. Yes. Um, but they found, yeah, a, a bunch of different interesting statistics. So take it away, Dedeker. Yeah. So this is specifically the site that put together this infographic and ran the study it was called bankmycell.com. I don't think this is what their main business model is about, but they have this information. Um, so according to them, 82% of women and 71% of men have been involved in ghosting at some point in their lives. And by involved in ghosting, they mean either on the receiving end or doing it to somebody else, which is a big chunk. And I would be inclined to believe this feels accurate to me. I yeah, know that that's not a accurate. good marker yeah. of scientific accuracy, but it does feel very accurate anecdotally of just it feels like, yeah, this is a situation that most of us out there have experienced in some way. And yeah. 18 to 35, that seems like that group of people absolutely is probably online dating. The, the prime ghosting age group and online <laughs> dating age group. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so th in addition to just asking if you've been involved in ghosting, they asked people their top reasons for ghosting. And so they broke this down by men and women. And for women, the top three reasons for ghosting, 50% was to avoid confrontation. 17% ghosted people because they didn't live up to their profile photos. And I guess when they saw them in real life. <laughs> or they or they texted them other images or mm. something. Or, or they became friends on Facebook and saw more photos of them or something, right? For whatever reason, yeah. they didn't live up to their profile photos. Uh, and then 10% ghosted because they perceived the other person as being too clingy or needy. And then for men... Actually, the same, like, first, second, and third place, uh, the percentages are just a little bit different. For men, it was 38% was to avoid confrontation. 28% was for not living up to their profile pictures. So a little bit less on the avoiding well, confrontation, yeah. but more on the not living up to your profile picture. And then 16% for the other person becoming clingy or needy. I thought it's interesting in a lot of these that between men and women, the reasons are very similar, even if the ratios are a little bit off, but still like the top ones are still the top ones. And unfortunately, the people doing this study clearly did not take into account any other gender options besides men and women. Um, but there you have it. Well, but okay, I think that even just looking at these results, these top reasons already generates a lot of interesting questions and conversations. You know, first of them being the fact that you know, people generally want to avoid confrontation. And so that's why they ghost. I do think that, I mean, I don't think that, um, I don't want anyone to take this as me defending ghosting by any means, but I do think that women often have a little bit more of an incentive to ghost than men do, mostly because According there's... According to these statistics, yeah. Well, but unfortunately, there's, you know, just a historical precedent of like, if you directly, for a lot of women, if they directly communicate with a guy of like, hey, actually, I'm not 
into it or I'm not feeling it or I don't, I'm not interested in this relationship or I want to end this relationship, that especially if it's someone you don't know, you don't know if they're going to fly off the handle and start flinging verbal abuse at you or worse. Mm -hmm. You know, I've definitely experienced that in real life. I have a lot of people I know have experienced that in real life. And so I think that it's interesting. This seems like kind of a catch all by talking about avoiding confrontation, that it's like both the potentially really scary confrontation of like this person may get really, really mad at me. Uh, or the maybe less scary confrontation of like, this may just be an uncomfortable conversation. Right. That even if it's not like actively aggressive response to it, that there's still that like, but why, but why, Oh, but no, yeah. but like this, but, and like having to convince them why you're breaking up with them sucks. Uh, that, that I, I could see a valid argument being made for, you know, something about our culture of handling rejection being a cause mm -hmm. of ghosting becoming such a popular option. That there's, yeah, there's a good PhD paper for those of you sociologists <laughs> out there. Oh, for sure. No, I saw a Twitter post that was like, it's the headline said uh, in the post below, um, flirt with me like a guy would. And it said, hey, hey, hi, <laughs> hey, <laughs> bitch. And that yeah. was it. And yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, classic, yeah. classic. Yeah. But the other thing that seems really interesting to me is the fact that in the top three is ghosting because they see the other person is too clean or needy. And again, this feels like such a big catch-all of response because I do agree that you can be very put off if someone is maybe a little too hot, too heavy, too fast, too mm -hmm. intense, truly, you know, hitting you up way too much early on. But I do think that this also shows that like, we really have this big cultural fear around being emotionally vulnerable yeah. early on in the dating process, because we don't want to seem clingy or needy. That's like the worst thing, especially for mm. women. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on to some studies um, that discussed why people ghost. So, okay, I found this study that had the most amazing title I've ever heard in a study in my life, and it was called When Your Boo Becomes a Ghost. Aww. So good. <laughs> so good. So freaking good. Like, I'm mad that they came up with that, because that should have been <laughs> the title of this episode, but someone else <laughs> beat us to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a study by these people. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so it laid out a few reasons why people might ghost. Um, and the first one was something that we've already talked about, that it, it allows the person to disengage from the relationship to avoid feeling like they're actively hurting the recipient, the, the other party, um, because they're not directly communicating that they're no longer interested in the relationship. So it's kind of like an easy way out, in essence. Which does make sense, especially if you're not super, if you don't like really know how to handle it, or maybe you're not that into them or something. It's just like, well, I'm going to just drop off and I'm done with this. It's, it's interesting. A thought that just came to mind about that is that I feel like the old fashioned way to do that move was to tell someone that you're casually dating that you're now exclusive with someone else. Mm. But I could see how in online dating, you kind of can't do that lie as easily anymore because they still see you on the online dating site, right? Or, or really on social point. media or whatever. And it's like, okay, I can tell that I was lied to. Hmm. So maybe ghosting sort of grew out of this. Well, that option didn't work anymore because it was the way to get out of it without having to say, I don't want to be with you. I'm just now not available. Like yeah. that was kind of the cop out before. Um, and then we've talked before on this show about how non-monogamy also kind of eliminates that option for you as well. It's not like, well, I'm not available because I'm seeing someone. It's no, I'm still available. But I just but don't want to see you. <laughs> but I just want to see you. Yeah. And, and that yeah. is a, a harder thing to say to someone, I think. Definitely. Yeah. And so, you know, other things, other reasons that this study laid out include just the fact that it's really easy to do basically based because you know so much of our communication is based on technology now that it's easy to block somebody it's really <laughs> easy to completely scrub someone from your life from your sphere if you want to you know even like on your phone right you can block yeah. a number mm -hmm. yeah super and easy bye bye mm -hmm. and combined with that it has become a fairly normative thing to do you know i think people know when they're getting into online dating now, that this is a possibility. They know when they're starting to create a relationship with somebody that this is a possibility. And 
I've worked with many people who now carry kind of this weird compound, almost trauma from being ghosted so many times that that starts to affect their future dating endeavors. And I don't know, it's just become such a normal thing in the culture. And I think because so many of us have personal experiences with this, that it's also become normative. Yeah, for sure. I think that that there is that case where someone even just doesn't get back to you for a couple of days because they may just be busy or have other things going on. And people will overreact to that and freak out and, and do the verbal abuse, like you said, in response to being ghosted, even though that's not really what the person was intending to do. So mm-hmm. yeah, there's there's a lot of kind of levels of, uh, I guess trauma is a word for it, but yeah, just sort of like levels of reactions and compounding things that goes into it. Um, research has also shown that when people do ghost, they're fairly disinterested in the relationship that they're exiting. So, I mean, that that seems kind of like a no-brainer, but there is something to be said. It's like, if you want to still maintain some kind of friend relationship or some type of relationship with this person, ghosting, it's not going to be a good option for that. So, no. so that makes sense. Um, and then time is also a factor. So generally, the relationship has only been six months or less if the person ghosts. Or maybe another way to phrase that would be, if the relationship has been six months or less, there's a higher chance that someone's going to ghost out of that. Whereas if it's longer, probably just because by the time it's longer, it's harder to do. Like Dedeker well, pointed like out. Maybe more emotional involvement. Uh, yeah, yeah I think that too. But but even without that, it's like if you've been together for a while, you probably know a lot more people in common now. You probably have more shared friends uh, or you've become friends with each other's friends, things like that, where ghosting is just harder all of a sudden, as opposed to, I think in addition to the fact that we communicate now through our phones and through social media a lot more, and it's easy to just block or remove someone from your contacts or something, that there's also this aspect of we're meeting people now online who are completely outside of our social circle, or at least we have that option, right? It's like, I didn't meet them at a friend's party. They weren't introduced to me by a mutual friend. We just met through algorithms online. And so, yeah, I can just ghost you and there's no one you can check in with There's no mutual friends to be like, hey, what happened with this? There's sort of no accountability. So yeah, I think that also made ghosting an option. And that also makes sense why that short time frame is more likely to involve ghosting. Yeah. And some other reasons that were pointed out by uh, specifically an article in Psychology Today um, include the fact that, like you were saying, Jace, if two people meet online, there's that lack of social connections that the two of them share mutually, which makes it easier for one person to ghost the other and not have to face any social consequences. I don't have to face the risk of running into you at the next party Mm -hmm. after I've stopped talking to you because we probably have completely separate lives and completely separate social circles. And also the fact that, again, as it's becoming more normative, people are becoming slightly more desensitized to ghosting. That doesn't mean that there's no emotional effect from it or there's no impact whatsoever, but Again, like we said, people are coming to expect it or expect it as a possibility. Um, If it's happened to you before, especially if it's happened more than once, you are also more likely to then do it to somebody else. It Mm. reminds me of, um, you know, it's the kind of thing of of like if a place when you show up is already dirty and has like litter everywhere or graffiti or stuff that like people are more likely to then contribute to the problem rather than not. You know, mm, yeah, um, if a place sense. is absolutely pristine, you're going to feel more self pressure to like put mm. your trash in the garbage or like, you know, clean up after yourself than if everyone before you has not. And so I think this is another example of that of kind of like the dating landscape hygiene is not very good and standards are very low. <laughs> Uh, This Psychology Today article talked about something called perceived obligation and how that varies based on person to person. And I've definitely been in relationships where I've been like super, super head over heels for someone and they've been kind of like, eh, about me Mm -hmm. and it sucked. But um, yeah, because of that, it's, it's perceived obligation of like how emotionally intimate or physically intimate, well, probably just emotionally intimate. I don't know. Maybe someone can perceive like your physical intimacy. Like maybe you can get into a relationship and have physical intimacy and somebody can be like, "Eh, that wasn't really that big of a deal to me, but you can feel very intense and excited about it. hundred percent. No, I've absolutely absolutely been on both sides of that 
where totally the physical intimacy for one person is like, wow, this is really something. And for the other person, it's just kind of meh. Yeah, I've been on both sides of that and it sucks. Yeah, me yeah. too. And it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and so along those lines, if you're on the side of like, eh, any either mm-hmm. of those scenarios, then it might be easier for you to ghost and for unfortunately the other person to feel real shitty. So yeah, we're going to get a little bit more into the pros and cons of ghosting, of which there are a few, even pros, which is which is interesting. We're going to talk about some of those. And then also what to do if you've been ghosted or if you feel like ghosting yourself. But first, we are going to talk about some ways that you can help us continue to make this show free for all of you out there. So now we're going to talk about the pros of ghosting. So this we spoke about a little bit before, but the ghost gets out of having to directly (laughs) communicate and face the partner head on that they are ghosting, that they want to end the relationship with. They're just, you know, they're like, "Uh, I don't I don't need to do that. I can just kind of get out of it without having to do that confrontation in any way. And so for the one who's doing the ghosting, this might be an easy, nice way out for them. Yeah, it is funny. It's like the main pro is like, yeah, it, it is an easy way out. Like, yeah, we can't right. debate that. Easy for you, who's doing the ghosting. It is right. an easy way out. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that is a pro to consider. But you might also be a shitbag, potentially, for doing it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll yes. get into that later. Um, I do think that in some instances of abuse, if you're on the receiving end of abuse, leaving a partner and ghosting them can possibly be the safest option for the person who is being abused. This is something that literally has come up when I've worked with clients who are leaving abusive relationships. Um, And usually what I hear from people is there's a lot of guilt around that of like, oh, I can't just not talk to him. I can't just not respond to her message, you know, that like, there's still that sense of like, oh, there's that's guilt, that's bad manners, that's bad digital communication manners to just ghost somebody. But I do think that in instances where you're being abused in some way, have at it, ghost Mm -hmm. away, let your little ghost spirits run free. Um, (laughs) Uh (laughs) So that means, you know, anytime that you're feeling uh, truly unsafe, by someone's behavior, if you're subject to verbal, emotional, physical abuse by a partner, if someone is violating boundaries in a way that makes you feel unsafe and where communicating to the person is not going to help, I think that's an important thing that like if someone violates your boundaries, um, you know, it's up to you whether or not it feels like if you say something that that's going to help, even if it's like saying something to them like, hey, this crossed a boundary for me. It made me feel not okay. And for that reason, I don't think I can continue the relationship with you. You know, even saying that, if it feels like saying something is going to open you up to more abuse or more boundary violating, then yeah, that's probably okay to to just kind of leave it there and ghost them. Yeah, this Psychology Today article gave the example of if somebody is coming to your place of work, for example, and like just showing up or being... Uh, maybe abusive or confrontational or something that perhaps that's a good indication that a boundary is being violated and that that's like not okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in that, in that case, we don't need to get into this too much, but like in that case though, your ghosting will probably only be the first step in that process then if they Mm -hmm. are someone who's actually showing up to your place of work or things like that. But Yes, I think Dedeker's point of just if that's the situation that you're in where you feel unsafe or there's abuse going on, like getting out of it in any way is better than staying in it. And so if ghosting is the easiest and safest way to do that, then yeah, heck yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, if someone is actively lying to you, manipulating you, showing a direct disregard for your emotional well being, basically the point that we're trying to get at here is that like if someone has been shitty to you like truly shitty to you and making your life miserable like you do not owe them anything (laughs) yeah i think (laughs) other than getting yourself out getting yourself safe getting yourself away and you don't need to feel bad about not communicating with this person anymore yeah definitely uh as far as another pro um for the person who has been ghosted sometimes Breakups offer a much-needed opportunity for individuals to examine themselves and to change and develop in constructive ways. I 
personally think that this pro to ghosting is a little bit bullshit because it's more just like a pro to being broken up with, not specifically <laughs> well, about ghosting. I know. But it's worth it's mentioning just, at least. <laughs> it's funny because, of course, when you like look at these articles that are talking about like, well, you know what? You know what, girl, you're better off. It's fine. Yeah. Like, essentially, that's what right. that is. But right. there is something to be said for that, I think, of saying like, hey, maybe... Maybe I can uh, worry about myself and work on myself and, you know, not have that negative energy in my life. And that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I would say that maybe another way of looking at that, another pro for the one being ghosted, especially if this happens earlier on, is, okay, at least I've learned earlier than later how highly this person regards me in terms of my relationship and their respect for me, meaning not very much. So yeah. yes, you're better off without that. Um, totally. I, I would also say that it's like, if someone ghosted you, it's like, this is not a person that you can probably expect real good communication with, at least with you, right? They don't regard you highly enough to, to treat you with respect that way. Um, or, or they're afraid of you in which case like that's, that's a wake up call as well. Right. Any, any number of reasons. So there's that. Um, in other ones, uh, the person being ghosted, uh, sometimes in the research they found that the person being ghosted also kind of doesn't care that much about the relationship, in which case it's like, oh, whew, they ghosted so I didn't have to. Or, or maybe you're <laughs> someone who, doesn't, who isn't comfortable with doing ghosting, and it's like, oh, well, okay, they ghosted me, so at least I don't have to have that breakup conversation with them. So, yeah, that, that also can be a pro, I, I, I guess. I well, guess. yeah, it, <laughs> I feel like we're reaching it, for some of these. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the this came from the boo becoming a ghost, um, uh -huh. and it talked to they talked to some of the respondents about this, and they said, "Well, you know, when I've been ghosted, especially really early on in a relationship, sometimes like it's nice to not have to hear why this person doesn't like me, and it's kind of mm -hmm. sparing my feelings a little bit, so they don't have to like directly face the reasons why the relationship is ending." And that that, especially when it's like someone that you don't know that well, sometimes it's kind of nice. So yeah, it depends. I can see that. I can see that yeah. if, if it's it like... It depends on the person. But. Yeah, it seems to depend on your personality and preferences. If, if I can reduce having to hear from someone, yeah, I just don't find you that attractive. Or I can reduce totally. having to hear from someone, yeah, I'm just not feeling right. the spark. And I'm like, well, that's kind of a bummer. That maybe for some people, the bummer of being ghosted feels like less of a bummer than the bummer of hearing why this person isn't interested in them. I guess mm -hmm. I could see that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the cons of ghosting. And some of them probably seem fairly obvious, but some of these are actually research-backed. So multiple studies have shown that those who disengage from a relationship report less distress than those who've been broken up with. So as in, if you're the dumper, chances are you're feeling less emotional distress than the dumpy. That's not necessarily a rule for all situations, but it seems like research shows that that's a general trend. However... For breakups that did involve an actual certain amount of conversation at the time of the breakup did allow for closure for both individuals. So basically by ghosting, you're robbing both of you of the opportunity to have something close to closure. I think closure is a tricky topic. We could probably do a whole episode on closure, um, you know, and whether or not you can get it truly or whether it's appropriate to get or things like that. But I do think that like being able to communicate around a breakup can help set the stage for both of you moving on and healing, ideally. Yeah, you're essentially depriving someone that opportunity for closure or having like kind of a closing conversation or something of that nature if you just ghost. And there's a lot of potential like sadness and anger and feelings of rejection and depression. The, these studies have found that those things happen once somebody gets ghosted because they don't like know what 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 happened here like what mm -hmm. just went went wrong like was it me was it them are they dead what's happening like i don't know so there's a lot of like challenging uh components of that and that is a big con of ghosting for the person who gets ghosted it sucks yeah definitely yeah so that kind of questioning of going back and forth between like, oh gosh, did something happen to them? Or are they ghosting me? Is it something I said? Did I smell really bad? Should I do something wrong? Should I, should I apologize to them? Should I reach out? You know, that that kind of questioning 
ultimately causes the recipient of ghosting to question not only themselves, but also just their personal judgment. You yeah, know, should I have like, seen this coming? Yeah, mm. yeah. It just, you know, can just cause a lot of questioning and suffering. And mm-hmm. I imagine that maybe in some instances that kind of questioning could be helpful for someone, maybe someone who needs a reality check of, was I super inappropriate then? You know, like maybe that kind of self-questioning could be helpful. But I think that for most instances and for a lot of people, it brings in all these questions that just serve to kind of fill up your mind and kind of cause suffering and and ruin your day. Yeah, Uh, I I think that another sort of con here is that, like we mentioned earlier about connecting online, you generally won't have a lot of mutual acquaintances and things like that, which kind of makes ghosting an option. However, uh, the experience that I've definitely had, and I think you two have as well, is that the world really isn't quite as big and, and anonymous and disconnected as it seems at first. And that's that quite often, even a year or two later, you might then meet some mutual acquaintance of someone or they will, or you oh, want to start dating someone. Especially if you someone. are dating in the kink scene or the non-monogamy uh-huh. scene or any kind of niche right. dating if it's, community. You're into you're, the LARPing gonna, community or the you're historical gonna, reenactment it's, community. It's, right. yeah. it's going to happen. It is going to happen. It, it will happen. And if you think about that, if you have, say, even if it's pretty early on and you have a breakup that does involve some honesty and some closure, even if that's harder at first, if you then sometime later are dating someone who might know them and that topic comes up, even if you had that breakup and it, and it kind of sucked, they might be like, yeah, we had this breakup and it was hurtful or something, or maybe they won't. Maybe they'll be like, yeah, I was bummed about it for a little bit, but usually we get over these things after a while, especially if it's a shorter term relationship. Uh, but it's like, yeah, but they, they were cool. Sure. Go for it. But if you ghosted them, it's like, mm, this person just completely disappeared on me. Don't trust them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in a relationship with them. So you are kind of poisoning the well as it were. Yeah. It's like in the language episode when we were talking about primacy, you're priming that person to uh, not want to go out with the person who ghosted you. Because, like, wow, they're a ghoster. They're not to be trusted. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Can't trust. <laughs> they're a ghostbuster. Can't trust ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, I guess just that, that, that your actions aren't as free of consequence as you might think. And I'd say the same is true for things like ghosting an employer. That happened to us uh, a couple of years mm. ago. Yep. Um where someone ghosted on us, but you can guarantee if anyone in my social circle or professional circles ever comes across hiring that person, I'll be honest and just be like, yeah, they were great, but they ghosted and I would never hire them again, nor would I want anyone else to. So, you know, it, it just, that's, that's going to happen. That's just a consequence of being a, a shitbag instead of curse, <laughs> but of being a bad <laughs> communicator, right? That, that will it does have the potential to come back, especially if it's something you're doing often. Okay. Now, what to do if you've been ghosted? So I think the first thing, the the question I think that comes up the most is, do I keep trying to reach out to them? Like we gave the example earlier, you know, Emily, with that woman that you were talking to online who then ghosted you. I remember for a long time after that was this constant question of, do I send another message? Do yeah. I what? Like I've I've been through that too of I don't know how to proceed. Are are they okay? Should I keep reaching out? Are they maybe busy and I should give them some time and then reach out? Or is this a clear indication that they're just not interested? And Yeah, and I definitely made I was like I did the thing of, "Oh, uh I haven't heard from you in a bit." Like if you we can definitely take it back a little bit and we don't have to go out and can keep talking and i did that one more time and it was clear that nothing was happening so i was like well that's a wash not gonna happen yeah so this one's hard to give just you know hard and clear advice on yeah but as a general thing our recommendation would be to once you get the sense that you're being ghosted or that that might be happening is to reach out once and check in about that. And if nothing happens from that, don't then try to guess for them what you might've done wrong or something like that. And instead it's just, even if, even if there is some reason why they're gone, doing that isn't going to help the problem. 
like they're, they they just got busy or something came up in their family, like they'll come back when they come back if they will, but they probably won't. So to to gosh, you know what? Actually, I just remembered that this happened to me years ago, even before really? it was more social media and actually just calling that there was someone in beauty school that I was really into and we'd gone on a couple dates and then I went on a trip with my family and ended up, you know, probably leaving her like 10 voicemails or something. Just oh being no, like, Jace. And, I, and it wasn't like oh, I went Jace. off the deep end of like oh. being Wait, like, were you, just you like, where jerk, are you? I hate you. And then the next message being like, I'm so sorry, I love you. It wasn't like that kind of thing. But it was just leaving another message being like, hey, uh, so just checking in again. Like, hope, hope you're all right. I, you know, and it's just thinking about how that looks from the other side. I'm like, that's shitty. That's like, that, that sucks. It didn't make me look good then either, even though I was being ghosted. So it's just best to not do the one reach out and then leave it as hard as that is. Yeah. I like to follow the NVC formula for this and nonviolent communication formula for this, uh, as in just clearly stating the observation as clear as possible without any spin. So as in, instead of, hey, you dropped off the face of the planet or, hey, it's been radio silence you know, saying things like, hey, so I haven't heard from you in, in two weeks. And I, you know, have some question marks around that, you know, and and I will often just go ahead and be like, I'm wondering if you're just too busy or if you're feeling like this isn't a thing. Like I'll, I tend to default on the side of giving them an out, honestly. Mm. Because That's smart. You don't yeah. have to. Some people say, no, don't do that. But I'm just like, whatever. I will, like, I think this is going to be a more pleasant interaction if I let them save face. If I, especially if I suspect that, like, this person's maybe just not that interested in me. But, like, if I can at least let them save face, maybe that's going to lay a foundation for at least us not feeling awkward and weird, especially if we run into each other in a social setting again. So yeah. I do that. Some people say not to do that. I think it's just kind of up to you. Yeah. Maybe just sort of a, uh, so I noticed I haven't heard from you in a while. It feels to me like this might be ghosting, but I don't really know you well enough to know for sure that that would be the case. Uh, respond with a ghost emoji if it is. <laughs> <laughs> ghost emoji, Y or N. Oh, man. <laughs> checkbox. Yeah, that's good too. I, I like really, ghost. I really Colon, that... <laughs> Y or N, checkbox. <laughs> I really wish that was in the cultural zeitgeist. Can you imagine if that was just the accepted cultural tool? It would checking. be helpful. Right. Yeah. It's good. yeah ghost, ghost emoji colon Y <laughs> slash N. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's, I like that a lot. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, patent that shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Boy. Um, okay. So then in the event that you are pretty sure that you've been ghosted is kind of like with any breakup, but I think specifically with ghosting where they've sort of cut you out entirely is that... It's okay, and actually probably recommended that you do the same, actually, is just remove reminders of this person. Uh, you know, generally, like we said, these are going to happen in somewhat shorter-term relationships, too. And a lot of times, our baggage is around the future that we thought we might have had with this person. And dwelling on that, when someone has made it clear that, that this is the level of regard that they have for you in this relationship, isn't going to do you any good. That's not going to make you feel good. It's okay. Just get rid of those reminders of the person. That might mean unfollowing or even blocking them on social media uh, if they haven't already done that to you. Uh, deleting your old texts with them. Uh, stop looking at pictures of the two of you. I know it's easier said than done. It sounds very simple when you say it and that it's hard to actually do in real life. But really, like in those moments of clarity, take away the temptation. Just get rid of the things. Because when it's the middle of the night and you've been drinking or you're tired and sad, that's when you're going to look through those. And if in your better moments, you've already deleted them or blocked them or whatever, or deleted their contact information, that's not going to be an option. Unsubscribe from their mediocre YouTube channel. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or in my case, don't look at pictures of their baby. Jeez, you know who Emily. I'm talking about. Oh, yes. no, yeah. Emily, you're the oh, Emily, you're the worst at that. I'm such a Pisces. <sighs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Blame it on the Pisces. Okay. Okay. Um, um, no. Another thing is, like we 
previewed a little bit earlier is you can realize that this is probably an indication of a red flag. This is probably a sign of emotional unavailability or if not even emotional unavailability, just time unavailability. You know, truly, if this person truly, truly, truly is so busy, they can't respond to your text until two weeks later. Uh, you're probably not going to have a relationship with them that feels very good. No. You know? Uh, And it's a clue as to what might have been coming had that relationship actually continued. This could be a sign. This person is super conflict avoidant. And so it is okay to also consider the positive that, you know, if you've been ghosted, it sucks. It feels bad. Um, Take care of yourself. And remember that, like, maybe this is dodging a bullet to a certain extent. Yeah. And as with any breakup, this is definitely a time to, like, have some self-love and self-care. So maybe have some reflection but be around people who make you feel good about yourself, who lift you up, take a bath, masturbate, watch your favorite show. I mean, it's hard to like be around people right now, but do a Zoom call, have a <laughs> yeah. Zoom cocktail hour. Yeah. And just understand like often uh, there's sometimes just like a disengagement strategy that someone wants to go through. And sometimes it's like, it's not you, it's them. This is the best way that they know how to let go. And that's kind of unfortunate that that's the best way that they know how to let go. So you yourself, you let it go. You let it go too. Yeah. Enjoy your life. Yeah, It's better off Uh, without them. So let's talk about trickier topic, which is what do you do if you personally are feeling tempted to ghost somebody? Feel and yourself again, drawn to the spiritual realm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, and spiritualism. I really want to be a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, if this is outside a situation where you're escaping some very clearly abusive, toxic dynamic, there's this great Medium article that puts ghosts into four categories, which I think is really interesting to think about. And I'm really curious to hear from all y'all what you think about this, all y'all listeners out there. If you've ghosted somebody in the past, what uh, what kind of ghost you were in that situation. So yeah. these are the four types of ghosts that they lay out. The avoidant... They each have little hats. <laughs> <laughs> the avoidant ghost, so as in the person who's going to run away from any kind of conflict, avoid conflict at all costs. There's the lazy ghost, who is just lazy, can't be bothered with doing anything hard, including being nice to someone or decent or you know, going through the discomfort of being honest with somebody. There's the mean ghost. So truly, maybe this is like the shit bag category. The person who really doesn't care at all about anybody else's feelings, has no qualms about ghosting, dropping off the face of the planet, things like that. And there's the half ghost, someone who was born to a human father and a ghost mother. <laughs> I did not see that coming. That really <laughs> oh my god! That's not what it is. The half ghost, according to them, is someone who may float back and forth in your life, or likes to keep their options open. Maybe this is a person like a breadcrumbing, yeah, breadcrumbing or submarine yeah. or something like that. The half ghost. I think sub- Submariner <laughs> is how we would Submariner. call that. A, just an episode rife with like fun and <laughs> jokes. <laughs> Good yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. So I think it's really important to look at a list like this of all the different motivations for ghosting and just reflect. Reflect on the relationship so far. Evaluate the reasons why you feel it's easiest to ghost this person. Is this related to your past relationships? Is this related to something from your family of origin? Is this part of your own baggage? You know, I think this is a really good opportunity to really hold up a mirror and get really honest with yourself of, you know, am I tempted to ghost this person because I'm just lazy and I don't want to have a hard conversation? Or um, do I have a ghost mom <laughs> i don't i don't know gosh really, <laughs> my ghost mom my ghost it. mom always taught me to to disappear when things were difficult i don't mm, know I there see, you go i see yeah it's a lot yeah. of baggage there with your ghost mom <laughs> wow um okay so so then after you've spent that time considering is to then ponder telling that person that you just aren't interested in them and that that might actually be the kindest solution even if it feels hard at first. It's kind of like the tearing the band-aid off fast as opposed to slow. Um, on a side note, there have been studies on that, which are super interesting, that uh, basically have scientifically proven that taking the band-aid off faster, even if it causes more pain over a shorter amount of time, ultimately results in less experience of pain for the person enduring huh. it. Wow. Okay. Uh, so science says. 
Science rip says, that band-aid off. Rip that rip band-aid it. off. Yeah. I mean, it, don't rip your skin off with it, but do it as fast as you can do safely. <laughs> uh, and to consider being direct. Uh, sometimes it's hard to assess our feelings and figure out why we just aren't interested in someone. But if you are able to, sometimes being direct is the kinder thing to do, ultimately. Even if it feels kind of shitty at first and it sucks for them to hear it, at least it's done and it's clear um but as we said before if you're in an an abusive or dangerous situation just do whatever's going to keep you the safest and if that's ghosting heck yeah do it right your your health and well-being should ultimately be your number one priority i also want to point out i think that some people can really be tempted to ghost or not want to be direct about these things because they feel like, oh, then it's going to start this big conversation and I'm going to have to like really lay out my reasons why or this person's going to try to argue with me on it. And my personal opinion is you can step up and be honest and just say something like, you know what, I'm not, I'm just not feeling the spark and I, you know, I'm, I'm not interested in seeing you anymore. And you do not have to give your reasons. You really yeah, that's don't. reason mm-hmm. enough. Maybe yeah. if you're open to having a conversation with that person and you think that they're open to hearing it, maybe you can have a conversation. But if someone takes that and then is like, well, why? Well, why? Well, why? And like then <laughs> slipping into toxic and abusive behavior, trying to mm-hmm. force you to explain why or defend yourself or are trying to debate you like you, you don't have to do that. You know that like I, I say, like trust in kind of your own boundaries of like be honest, but know that like. You don't have to get into a big, long, protracted conversation with this person needing to defend your reasons why. And I think that if you trust in that and you know that, in my experience, it makes it a little bit easier to just be honest, you know, because you're not then trying to ghost in order to avoid having this really long, extended conversation that's not fun for anybody. Something else to consider is if you're in a situation where you feel like ghosting could be an option, if you are direct and they keep asking all these questions or they keep trying to convince you why you should still date them, that ghosting option's still there, right? You can still (laughs) block at that point. And at least you've Hmm. been clear first, right? And then you still can do that eventually. But kind of give people, I guess, the benefit of the doubt up front before resorting to that option. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Well, we hope that you learned a thing or two about ghosts today. (laughs) And we we're going to be talking ghost jokes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, there were there were many ghost jokes, but um, we're going to actually be talking a little bit more about online dating in the current climate of COVID, having to stay at home, um, dealing with all of those parameters around online dating, because there's a lot of really interesting statistics on online dating currently. Um, so we are going to be talking about that in our Patreon bonus episode. So we would love to hear from all of you out there. Have you been ghosted? Have you done it? What are the tactics that you used? And which Um, ghost are you? Yeah, which which ghost ghost are you? And then also, I really want to know which um, uh, Ghostbuster the three of us are. So are we either Dan Aykroyd, (laughs) um, Bill Murray, or Harold Ramis? Yeah, which one are we? I Gosh. think that I'm Bill Murray, but maybe not. Maybe Jason is Bill Murray. Maybe Dedeker. I don't know. All of us want to be Bill Murray. But uh, yeah, we would love to hear from you. So the best place to share your thoughts with other listeners is on this episode's discussion thread in our private Facebook group or Discord chat. You can get access to these groups and join our exclusive community by going to patreon.com slash multiamory. In addition, you can share with us publicly on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. You can email us at info at multiamory.com. Multi-Amory is created and produced by Jace Lindgren, Dedeker Winston, and me, Emily Matlack. Our episodes are edited by Mauricio Balvanetta. Our social media wizard is Will McMillan. Our production assistants are Rachel Shenowark and Carson Collins. Our theme song is Forms I Know I Did by Josh and Anand from the Fractal Cave EP. And the full transcript is available on this episode's page on multiamory.com. 